to the first episode of Rocket Talks. Uh, I am your host, Rocket Guy. Um, so yeah, for the first episode, we will be covering liquid bipropellant rocket engine power cycle. So what does that even mean? What is a liquid bipropellant rocket engine power cycle? That seems very that sounds very complicated, um, but it's really just a, a way that you can actually categorize your rocket engines, right? So, um, so pretty much the first thing first. What is a power cycle. A power cycle basically revolves around how power is derived to feed the propellants through the turbo pumps and into the combustion chamber. Um, it's just like I said, a, an easy way or at least one of the ways that you can categorize all of the different types of rocket engines, right? Every single rocket engine is unique in some way or another. However, each one usually follows one of these five or six different kind of categories that we'll be covering today. Um, so the main thing that you need to know uh, starting off about these power cycles is that you have two different types of systems. You have an open cycle system, and this refers to basically any system that does not have all of the propellant and its byproducts go through the engine. Um, this usually refers to a, a gas generator cycle, and gas generator cycles um, can be found on the Merlin 1D, both the vacuum um, variant and the core stage variant. Um, it's probably the most common type of rocket engine out there. Um, it was also used on the F1 engine and the J2 engine, which were both used on the Saturn, the Saturn V. Um, so now that you have the open cycle system, you also have the closed cycle system. Um, and so a closed cycle system, is, as, as I'm sure you can guess, is just basically a system where all of the propellant um, goes through the engine and nozzle. And none of it is actually wasted by either throwing it overboard or, or you know, attaining losses due to a secondary flow. Um, so basically all of your propellants are used to spin the turbines and then all of your propellants are going through the combustion chamber um, and out the nozzle. So that's that's what a closed system is. Um, so like I said, the first one that we'll be covering uh, is actually called a pressure fed system, right? And I, I will be going into KSP here to demonstrate said pressure fed cycle. So a pressure fed system is, like I said, probably the most simple rocket engine system that is has ever been developed and is currently in use today was used since the first era of rocketry. And basically how I have it set up right here is um, exactly how you would find it on pretty much any drawing or in a book. If you actually looked up pressure fed cycle, you will find a diagram that looks something like this, right? Um, so if we go ahead and save it and we go ahead and check our staging here, it looks good. We'll go in here and, uh, and launch this thing and I'll show you guys kind of how this works. This is a pressure um, fed cycle, right? You have, so let me just kind of walk you through what we have here. We have your rocket engine with a combustion chamber. And what you actually have down here is a pressurant. All it is is something like helium, um, just some sort of inert gas, could be nitrogen, although nitrogen is not really good because it doesn't have a very good expansion ratio, right? Usually what's used is helium because when helium gets hot, it expands rapidly. Not only rapidly, it expands a lot. So for every increase in temperature by one degree, it, it increases its volume, you know, um, when it expands a lot more than something like nitrogen. Nitrogen has a very rather small compression ratio. Um, so basically you have a pressurant vessel, right? Just a tank that holds some sort of pressure and some sort of inert gas. Let's call this helium, for instance, right? So for a pressure fed cycle, you usually have a... Uh, a helium tank that goes into and goes around the rocket chamber. So why do they do this? They do this to heat up the gas, right? Um, if you're talking about wanting to increase your volume or increase the expansion of your gas, you want to heat it up. So you can either use something uh, like pass the gas through uh, small veins inside the combustion chamber to heat it up or just use an external heat exchanger. Um, and both of those can be, you know, kind of simply uh, integrated into your vehicle design. Um, so I chose to actually model this one as using the heat, using the combustion chamber as the heat exchanger. Um, so you'd flow your helium gas through uh, small veins around your uh, combustion chamber, and this would heat it up, causing rapid expansion, right? And this is what then flows into your external, uh, into your uh, rocket tanks, right? So you have oxidizer and you have your fuel. Um, so once you increase your pressure, you now have a driving force to actually push your propellant through into your rocket chamber to be ignited, right? Into your thrust chamber. Um, so if we just did some, this is probably the simplest thing that we'll be showing all night, because the other ones actually involve turbo machinery, which is actually really cool. Um, so this one, all it is, is a pressure and gas gets heated up, 
flows into the external uh, flows into the tanks here and then that pressure that increased pressure then forces all of your propellant through the lines into the combustion chamber for ignition so it's pretty simple right it's it's really no moving parts this is why this is such a this is why this was used on a lot of different vehicles. This was used in the Apollo era. This was actually used for both the command module and this was also used for the um, lunar module, the landing lunar module. They use propellant feed systems because they're extremely reliable, right? There's no moving parts. They're super simple. No moving parts, super simple, um, th at least a really high um, reliability, right? Because you there's less things that can cause braking. Um, so this is actually a really, really good design when you actually want something that has, you know, easy startups, uh, reliable, multiple startups, um, and just, like I said, super simple design, very, very clean, very clean design. So some of the advantage of a pressure fed cycle system is, like I said, no complexity, very, very little complexity, simple design. That's fantastic. There are no moving parts that increases your reliability. Um, it's also capable of multiple restarts, right? Because all you need is pressure to cause the fuel to flow, and then you have your ignition system. Very, very simple. That's it. Um, however, this does not come without its disadvantages, right? Um, something like this usually has to go on a low chamber pressure system, right? Something that does not require a lot of thrust. Um, because if you're talking about high chamber pressures, that means that you usually need higher mass flow rates. Um, so the only way to get higher mass flow rates through a vehicle system like this is you have higher pressures. Well, when you have higher pressures, you need a sturdier tank, you need uh, a heavier tank because it has to be more sturdy, and you also need more pressure in order to actually force feed uh, more fuel through your through your lines, right? Uh, so that is the main disadvantages. Is usually this involves weight and low pressure systems. So, like I said earlier, um, this was very very. Uh, you know, used commonly on things like the Apollo um, vehicle, both the command module and the lunar descent module, because they needed just a simple system, right? All they needed was pressure and an ignition system, and they their rocket could go. Their rocket could go, and that made them happy, right? Um, other systems like this were are, are a lot of cold gas systems, so that way, if you actually think about it, um, SpaceX's Falcon 9, the cold gas uh, thrusters, when the booster separates and has to, you know, maneuver into place, it's RCS systems. Uh, that is pressure fed and then you also have something uh, which is actually really cool which was the orbital maneuvering system of the space shuttle right the SS OMS the space shuttle orbital maneuvering system this was also used um, because it was actually a variant of the Apollo command module engine right so all they did basically was take the, com um, the Apollo command module stuff it into one of those engine nacelles um, and so there you, there you go, right? You already had your pressure and system um, already made. They just made it compact and into the OMS nacelles. Like, that was it. Um, so the, the, orbital, or the orbiter of the space shuttle was actually also a pressure and fed system, both the RCS and its OMS pods. Um, so that was definitely something that uh, it's, it's been proven, right? It's been proven to work, and therefore it's a pretty simple design, very reliable. Um, so that is probably, like I said, the simplest thing that we are actually going to show off tonight, um, but that we do have more.